Hey guys, welcome back on my sculpting course. This is the part two. So if you haven't watched part one, maybe you're interested to go on my YouTube channel and check that out. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to get started on the project. Uh, we're going to start sculpting. So let's let me present to you the, the references that we're going to try to to use. So basically, the project is going to be about sculpting the arm of an old man, I think. I think this way we're going to have interesting stuff um, all around. We're going to have high frequencies, low frequencies that are interesting. Uh, yeah. We're going to, this is going to be our main reference. Uh, we're gonna, not going to do a one-to-one. -one. We're going to use uh, other references and we're going to try to do our own thing with it. But I think in here we have some really in interesting things like really thin skin. We have uh, a lot of like small deformation on the skin uh, breakups uh, we have tendons we see bones we see muscle we see a bit of everything so i think it it's going to be an interesting project to try a bit of everything in terms of anatomy and it's still going to be we're going to keep it pretty small we're not going to do uh the, the a face even though the, the face is quite amazing uh we're gonna we're probably just going to do the forearm and the arm. Probably we're going to have some sort of framing like this towards the end. Uh, even doing the hand, I don't think we're going to have time to do this, but at, at least we're going to be able to talk a bit about every everything in terms of workflow. So uh, we're also going to use this this reference. It's the, the it's coming from 1024, which is a a website where they sell scans if you want to go check it out they have a bunch of scans and they always have a render with a full turntable that's gray shaded so it's amazing to see the form in three dimension uh, and have a full turnaround so you can definitely check that out i'll put the the links in the description of the the youtube if you want to use them if you want to scope the the project at the same time as me uh, i think the I'm interested to see it if you if you have a result at the end, so I'll give you guys those references. So whenever I start a project, I do take a bit of time to ask myself, okay, how am I going to do this? What are going to be the different steps? Uh, so you don't jump into it right away and start doing wrinkles because then you're shooting yourself in the foot. So for this one, I broke it down in six different steps. So, of course, steps, um, when I sculpt, it's not linear. I don't follow things one-to-one, -one. you know, it's always a bit more organic where I go back and forth between things, but I think it's going to be useful to, to break it down just so we can talk about different subjects. So the first one, the, the first step we're going to do is to create the pose. So trying to see what is the angle between every single joint of our body and then we're going to do a quick blocking where we try to have the proportions and the shape of our of our uh, landmarks so our arm our forearm what's the size of it and then we're going to get in into the first flow so we might be able to do all three of those today we're going to see how far we get First flow is about having the primary gestures in your forms. So I'm not going to talk about flows today. I'm going to talk about it in the next uh, part three, but we we might have time to get started on it. So trying to block in the, the big shapes like the, the bicep, just the, the form and the flow of the arm, things like that. And then and then probably next time we're going to get started on the secondary flow. So that's going to be the breakups. So let's say we take a look at, at a form like this. Yes, we have one big form, but then it, it breaks itself down in three different strands almost. So adding this is going to add this level of breakup that, that gives a bit of realism. Um, so that's going to be our breakups. Then step five is going to be our physical properties. So that's not truly a step, but it's it's all about trying to get our form to feel physical, to give it physical properties. So 
if we have a piece of skin, you know, and you want it to, to drag down, to droop, then maybe actually taking the geometry and pulling it downwards with a mask or something is going to give that effect. So we're going to talk a bit about it later. But let's say when I look at the pectoral muscle, how it actually overlaps uh, over here. This is something that we want to have in our geometry to have an actual overlap, just like we did before with a bean. Uh, it's something that's that is quite long to create if you want to take every single skin fold and actually pull it over the geometry. So usually I don't do this in my blocking or in my flows. So I take some time at some point to actually break down my geometry and create those uh, pockets of information just like here definitely if we want to have this nice crease we're gonna want to pull the geometry over the arm to have this nice skin fold over here so this is going to be a step and then finally the detailing that's all going to be about the breakup of our surface with uh, alphas sculpting um, and the, the probably the surface noise in ZBrush. So when you look at it from far away, you know, you don't see any pores or things like that, but we still see a breakup of the surface, especially over here, we can see it definitely here as well. We're gonna use other references at that point to try to see how we can break up the surface. Um, and yeah, that's gonna be our six different steps. I also added this little pyramid at the start because I think it's important to understand that every single step builds on top of each other. I, I added them in this order since, let's say this is the pose, and then you have the blocking, and then the first flows. If I decide to change the pose, I also need to rework my blocking and my first flows, and maybe my secondary flows and my detailing after everything builds on top of each other. So if I if I change the angle of this wrist, then I'm gonna need, like the entire outline is gonna change, it's gonna reveal new muscles, it's gonna, it's gonna start flexing, it's gonna create new uh, skin folds over here, things like that. So if you change something beforehand, you need to rework the stuff after. So we might use this to our advantage and actually do the detailing before the secondary flows and the physical properties. Um, this, basically, when you create all of those steps, you get a hierarchy in your forms where you, you have your primary form and then on top of that, you have the little breakup and then on top of that, you have your skin folds and things like that. So everything interacts with each other. So, if you get to the detailing and you need to make it make sense with everything that's that you made before, sometimes it's pretty hard and very, very long um, since you just have like a huge area to do like really, really small creases and stuff like that. So sometimes what I try to do is instead I do the detailing before with alphas, surface noise, stuff like that. And then I do the breakups uh, the secondary flows, the breakups, and after, based on my detailing, and then I, I make sure that my whole hierarchy of form makes sense together. So, I wasn't supposed to talk about this right now, but we're, we're going to get into it later. For now, we're going to get started with the pose and the blocking. So, before we do every single step, I'm going to try to explain a bit what's what is useful to know before before we go into ZBrush and also what I'm observing in the reference to, to then add it in our sculpt. We, the, the most important thing that you're gonna get from, from your experience in sculpting is your ability to observe. And so I'm, gonna try to share a few things as we go along about what I see and how I look at forms and how I look at references so that maybe you can 
you can spend that time and do it yourself. Usually, before I even start my day, I might spend something like 30 minutes just watching references and actually analyzing the form and how it behaves. And then I don't even need to use references that much after. It's, it's like in my head, I created some, some rules for myself about what I want. And then it's just about making sense of my model. So first thing, first things we're we're gonna do, we're gonna start with a pose. So let's let's see what what I observe from this. So for for this pose, what I what I liked is first of all we There's something really simplistic about it. We have this this like straight angle from the clavicle to the arm and then it's slightly bent downwards and then it goes back up. I don't really like that the, the hand is in the same position as the arm. So we're probably going to get closer to this pose for the hand where it's slightly bent. Um, but I, I kind of like the... It, it's kind of like weak as a pose. Th this feels very strong as a pose because it's like so far up compared to this. So I'm probably going to go closer to this with a bent hand. So from the front, I think it's pretty straightforward. What's interesting is that from the side, at first I, I thought it would just go completely straight on the sides, but we can see here that naturally the, the arm is going to go quite a bit forward and if you try it yourself, it's it's actually pretty hard to keep your arm completely straight backwards. So we're going to try to add this where the arm is slightly bent forward. And then same thing for the hand over here. The um, When you bend your, your wrist, it actually naturally goes slightly forward. So we're, we're going to do that as well. Since since we're gonna we're only gonna do the arm but we're still gonna try to block in the rest of the body and uh, keep it quite simple uh, whenever i isolate a part of the body to do it it's always important to do a larger piece of the body so that you're sure that it makes sense with the rest of it um if i if i scope the arm up to the shoulder for sure, I'm going to do the whole torso and maybe the other arm just to be sure that it makes sense and the proportions are correct. Uh, but we're, we're not going to need to do the legs. So um, if, if you want to learn more about poses, we're not, since we're not doing a full body, you're not going to learn that much about like offset, contraposto, stuff like that, uh, balance, um, solidity. So. If you want to learn more, maybe you want to go check out some 2D tutorial when people talk about uh, figure drawing. They talk a lot about gesture and things like that, so it might be useful to get into, but I'm, I'm not going to talk about it in this tutorial. So let me take a bit of water and then we're going to get started in ZBrush. So for this whole ZBrush part, for sure I'm gonna talk quite a bit less. So if you if you wanna put some music and sculpt at the same time, you're more than invited to. What I'm gonna use for the for everything that's posed is gonna be the the mannequin. It's uh, it's just an easy way to concentrate on the on the pose instead of focusing on creating forms but if you want to create your own cylinders or start from a sphere it, it also works so i'm gonna put the references aside but if you again it should be in the description so if you wanna if you wanna put them on your screen you can Like we said on the side, it's a, it's quite a bit forward, so we're gonna try to add this.
actually really like to spend that time before sculpting to analyze what we're looking at and because you find out a bunch of things that you you would have never noticed if you didn't spend the time doing it like if i just started sculpting there's no way i would have noticed that the arm is bent forward or maybe too late in the process so taking the time is quite useful so i'm thinking right now of of my final render which is probably going to be something like this in terms of of framing and I'm thinking that we probably want to avoid having the head in our framing. So I'm going to try to bring the balance of our character a bit out of the way so that we can slightly take the head away from the hand. Again, we don't really care about this arm, but... There's something that felt weird about it, and I think that it's just the angle of my forearm was not aligned with the angle of my arm. I think now it's going to feel a bit better. There's something really misleading about the the mannequin, so for sure you're gonna need to to change the pose a bit once you start sculpting. But it gives a really good base and an easy way to to start out your your process. So I don't think we're gonna go much further than this let's combine all of this so to combine it either you can use adaptive skin which is gonna uh, just dynamesh the whole thing sometimes what i like to do is if you put the dynamesh resolution to zero and you make the adaptive skin what you're gonna have is every single group is gonna be a different poly group so you can you can still modify it as a separate geometry so that was the first part for the pose for sure we're gonna have to go back to it um but now everything is merged so we started with the the mannequin but now if we want to change the pose it's going to get harder and harder if you're trying to change the pose over here then you're going to need to do it with a bunch of masks and place a pivot and things like that or use some sort of other tool but it's always easier to build it correctly here and then go to the next step and then slowly build your your form this way so now we're going to go into the blocking so i'm just going to try to make sure that we have a nice cube for this and a nice cylinder that represents the arm and for we're we're gonna keep it quite simple because i i like to merge everything quite quickly but uh from what i observe right now um what i what i want to get is the the big gesture of the form you know i'm looking i'm looking at this arm 
and I can see this nice curve over here same thing here there's like a there's a nice arc to it that I that I want to get and from the blocking I also want to see how forms interlock with each other so I like how the arm goes under here and we have the deltoid and the, the pectoral muscles that actually overlap the whole form so I definitely want to get this in this overlap and also how this form interacts with the other so I'm gonna try to get this in my blocking right away and just get the, the proportion of how wide this is compared to this so our our big proportions the more we go the more we're gonna get close to to our model and so it's gonna be hard to take this step back and see how big everything is together so this is the time to um, to see how everything is so let's let's get into it by the way, I'm probably going to try to go for an hour and then I'll, I'll stop myself. And then next time we're going to go back to it. We're going to look at what I did and what we can improve and what are going to be the, the next steps. So the first thing that I'm going to do actually is I'm going to try to separate my mesh in different parts and then move all of them so i'm gonna do that with the polygroups so i'm this is gonna be my arm with elbow this is gonna be my hand this is this is gonna be my arm and then we're not gonna do the hand so i think we're gonna just keep this this is going to be our torso. This is going to be our lower body. And we're not going to keep the legs. So this is going to be our shoulder. What is this going to be? I think we're going to merge this with the torso. I, I don't have really a stand wor standard workflow, you know, I, I might I might decide to, to merge everything and dynamesh it and, or start with a sphere. Every single time I, my workflow is different, but I, I wanted to try it this way for this time around. So this is going to be our big blocks, one, two, three, five six and then the rest oops no seven and then the rest i'm gonna delete so then if i go in subtool split uh group split it's gonna split based on the poly groups so then i can take this one delete it and then we have the rest that that is merged actually i should have probably kept it for now but it's okay Gonna change my shader. So usually I really like to start with sculptress because I, I find that it's a it's a really quick way to get your ideas in and at some point once you feel limited by it, then we're going to try to create some sort of topology to work our way through it. But I think you can actually go pretty far with just sculptress.
I'm already seeing that the the arm is like way too long compared to the to the torso. So I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly block in our torso just to have a better idea of exactly what we're gonna have in terms of of proportion and then I'm gonna resize the arm. You're gonna see the more information you put in, the more you notice stuff that doesn't work from before. So you might start to put your, once maybe I'm gonna start to put the bicep, I'm gonna realize how long the arm is or other issues. So the, it's always important. You're gonna see I do this a lot where I work and then I look from far away just to be sure that I always take a, view of the big picture is it is it actually working what I just created or is it not even if I'm detailing I'm gonna look from far away and see okay no actually it's it's way too much it's way too rough it's you know yeah. you you get a lot of information looking at it from from far away And by the way, I didn't say it, but when you look at the pyramid, it's also that if your pose doesn't work, nothing is going to work after. If your blocking doesn't work, nothing is going to work after. So it is it is a bit an order of importance where you need to spend the time to make all of those steps right. So I'm just going to play some my landmarks just to... So we're not lost. You see already I'm getting annoyed that it's separated this part with the chest so i'm gonna merge it right away so that i can sculpt them together You see now, now that I blocked in a bit more, it's 
it is so 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 clear how big this is so i'm gonna take the hand and merge it with the forearm then we're gonna bring this a bit backwards I'm going to try to bring back some sort of head into my model. Because we're so used to seeing scale of our character with a head that doing something without it is, is pretty hard. What I'm going to do for this, I'm, I might be able to use symmetry. Just make our workflow faster. Delete. My goal is not to have a renderable head, but it's just to have an idea of what we have. We go this is gonna be enough it's just gonna give us an idea of what we're doing oops See now, now that we put a head, it feels pretty buff, so we're going to be able to make him a bit skinnier. Oops.
this one I'm not even trying to have proper forms that make sense so you can see that I'm like messing my form recreating it and then just breaking it up that's because right now in my head I'm really focusing on my proportions and on the post so I'm just trying to bring it forward and then I see an issue so then I I bring it in a different place and so this is not a time for me to actually create a nice neck that is like worked out and that I thought about every single thing that is happening and I'm you know I'm I'm going quickly and I'm just trying to build something for for the next steps that I'm that I'm going to be able to use having the neck I can see how the if the torso is too big everything influences each other so that's why I I like to have a lot more than what I'm just doing I'm doing more than just the arm right now since I want everything to be coherent at the end in one single sculpture.
already been 45 minutes so i decided to to make the course in this format where i sculpt in live because i i feel like doing a uh, time lapse of me sculpting gives the impression that it's really really quick to create but i i wanted to show that if you want to do something good that is well made it takes a lot of time and it's normal that it, you you don't have a finished result in an hour and i just find that sometimes it's a bit misleading where you see people posting quick sketches and and things like that that looks amazing when in reality it's it's normal if you take 20 or 40 hours to, to create a nice project that you're proud of. You see right away here, I could see that from the form that I created, if I go back, I have this form that goes upwards and then it goes inwards over here and then what what's that telling me this is telling me about my my geometry under is that this actually isn't really a rib cage or i like i'm i'm thinking about the uh, the geometry under the body right now i'm thinking about this the thoracic cage that's going to be under and you're gonna feel the thoracic cage all the way over here. You, we might see some bones poking out over here. And so if we have this big dip, dip in the form here, that means that the rib cage is actually non-existent. And so I'm just gonna solve this issue by filling this gap. Oops, what did I do? So, this is something where knowing anatomy is useful to understand where your form is coming from. And so you see right away here, I can feel that the form is more solid and Making forms that feel organic is much more about what you created, coherence in your hierarchy of form, um, about your layering much more than what people try to sell it, which is use this quick step, uh, use this noise, use this alpha, use this thing, or this or that. It's, it's much more about the 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 form you created than anything else so don't let don't let yourself be fooled by people that sell you dream for money I'd go a bit further in my blocking and just take every single element and try to get the basic idea of the form. So if we if we bring back our reference, uh, let's let's bring the both of them together. So I'm just gonna try to get in my blocking the idea of what is the big shape that this creates. Right now from this, I can kind of see a cube. So I'm gonna try to get this cube into my shape. 
and then from here I'm seeing a cylinder but from from my perception of it this cylinder is larger at the top and then it's thinner at the bottom so I'm just gonna get in my form this transition from a square to a cylinder I I'm barely gonna block in the bicep we're gonna do this at a later stage and we're gonna try to do this for the arm here as well we we might get a bit closer to this uh, this part feels a bit st stronger to me we have more muscle volume but what I find really interesting about this reference is that we can see right here the silhouette is broken up by this form right there and what this is telling me I don't even need to know anatomy to know that right here we have a bone and right here as well for sure there's something bony about this part and this is where your your form language and your silhouette can tell you the anatomy and the feeling of the form I can feel right now there's something hard right here I don't know which bone it is I don't know what's happening there but I just know from the silhouette and from looking at this arm that there's something hard so I'm gonna need to I'm gonna put this into it Sa same thing here it's a bit harder to see with this silhouette but for sure there's something hard over here and I think it's so clear with this reference when we have this big apex we can feel right away that oh, there's a bone right here and so if we put that in our sculpture the audience is, is going to feel that there's an underlying anatomy that there's something that there's something hard here you see the rib cage there's like this sharp line i can feel right away that this is a rib cage there's something hard and so i i can the form translates the anatomy so i'm going to try to put this in and um we're we're not gonna go too far with this but we we're we're gonna get our base in this might be a bit longer than an hour but we're not gonna go much further so if we again I think at this point I'm gonna merge everything together and dynamesh it and then it's a bit low so Now we can work on our transition as well. So, as we said before, bringing this apex in our silhouette from from the bone. This is coming from the bone of the arm. This is actually the bone that goes to the to the wrist. You can see that from the way I'm sculpting, I'm thinking of a different step in my head right now. I'm moving around the form more. I'm, I'm a bit closer. I'm, I, I'm not thinking uh, about the pose anymore. Though, I think the wrist is a bit too bent, so let's switch that.
you can see from from what I just did that the having perspective or no, no perspective actually changes the shading. If you look at the black part, you can see that the shading actually changes quite dramatically. So keep that in mind when you're if you're switching back and forth. There's something that felt broken about this form, and I was trying to see what it is. And from what I can see, if you look at this form, we have this flow, and then the outline is going outwards, and then it's going outwards again. And it's really, it's really subtle, but it feels broken, and it doesn't feel like a like a coherent piece. What I what I really want to get is having one and then two, having it as like one singular flow. So you need to become aware of exactly the outline that you're creating and how it's influencing the solidity of your form, especially at this step.
I really like this area with the thin, thin skin. I don't think it's going to be easy to create, but I want to make sure that we have it before we create our topology. Otherwise, we're, it's going to be even harder to, to add it. We're only going to be able to really measure our how thin it is once we have that topology. But for now, I just want to put a bit of information in there just to say that it, that it exists. And then at some point, we're going to put it in properly. I'm not making anything final just now. I'm just stating what my intentions are. That I want to have some sort of flow right here. I don't know exactly yet what it's going to be, but I, I want to have something there. I want to have this squarish cubic shape. I want to have this larger top and this. I want to have this bone. was so quick that it's an opportunity for me to to try different intensity in my shapes and different forms Feels quite muscular right now. I want to try to find a way to make him a bit more weak. So if we to finish up, I think how late is it right now? An hour five minutes. Okay, okay. So let's just go back quickly to to our steps just to to make sure that we that we're happy with what we created. So the first step was making the pose. So what I'm seeing right now, um, we have the clavicle going to the shoulder. I feel that the shoulder is disconnected from the body. So we're probably going to try to bring this whole thing more inwards. You see, that's exactly why you want to answer those problems as fast as possible. Otherwise, after you have to rebuild quite a bit. So. And I'm probably going to go back to this next week and do exactly the same step where I'm like, OK, let's destroy everything and rebuild. So this feels a bit big, so I'm going to make it a bit thinner. Again, if we go back to our pose 
Um, angle. Um, angle here is interesting. If we look from the side, it's slightly bent forward, which is nice. Same thing for the hand. It's slightly forward. Pointing forward, I mean, which is nice. And right now it's really hard to know if the size of the hand is correct or not. I would need to put more information into it to see the issues. That's the issue with sculptures. You you always get so excited about your forms and you just want to go in and make this little part nice when it's definitely not worth it right now. like all my forms are pretty bulky right now and i think if i want to make him look old and a bit weaker i'm gonna need to have all my forms a bit thinner have you know like here in the reference we can see like a thin tendon so i'm gonna need to work on that to uh, get the feeling i want from the from my character okay i'm gonna Oh, I just want to keep going. As soon as I say I'm going to stop, I... I see stuff that I want to fix. Something that feels more like strands. I'm gonna make him feel a bit, a bit less bulky. Okay, I think for blocking this is not too bad. So I'm gonna stop here for the for the sculpting part. Uh, next week or so, we're gonna uh, look back at what we did, and we're gonna start talking about flows, amplitude, things that I talked about on my first art station post. Uh, the first tips and tricks that I created. We're gonna. I'm gonna go into it and and talk about how we can apply it to this and what it exactly means to use that uh, also uh, someone in the comments in the first video commented that i that i had a note about the ten thousand hour concept so 
I'm just gonna quickly say what I wanted to say about this concept, or maybe I can bring back the the, the ten thousand hours. So basically, for those who don't know, the ten thousand hour concept is this idea that if you want to master any single subject, you're gonna need 10,000 hours to master it and so what I don't I, I, I think it's it's a concept that's interesting because it says like okay it takes a lot of time if you want to get good at something which is good to know what I think is misleading about it is that people understand that you need to spend 10,000 hours sculpting to get better at sculpting which I think is not really the case if we let's say we compare sculpting to playing the violin if you want to play the violin you're going to need to to just to play a single note you're going to need to place your hand at a super specific position and then you're going to need to place your bow at another specific position that you don't know what it is and otherwise it's going to sound terrible so it's it's something that's super technical as I, I know nothing about violin I'm, I, I just know it's complicated to play so you're gonna need to spend a lot of time just to be able to do something with it while if we compare this to sculpting the only thing I do for a whole day is wiggle my pen up and down so anyone has the same ability as me to wiggle their pen up and down what really separates people in terms of sculpting and especially digital sculpting is their understanding of form, their understanding of design, and the observation that they did over time. And so you don't, the most important thing is your comprehension of form and how to build it much more than it is the tools. And because the tools are actually not that complicated and they only help you to create the form and that's what matters in the end so to improve that your observation actually just um, looking at the world and looking at references is really the, the best way to do it and so I find that there's a balance that is quite important between sculpting and analyzing references when whenever I, I spend a day, let's say I'm going to sculpt a nose for a whole day, there's parts that I, that I don't understand, that I don't figure out. After, it, if, if I go in the metro, I might see someone and just like look at their nose and just try to understand how it's built and bring back that information after in ZBrush with me to create something. And over the years, you build this whole library of knowledge of trying to understand how an arm feels and how a tendon feels compared to other stuff. And so there's a lot of those little nuggets of information that I, I just, I can't share, but it's just like building up this library, this understanding of how form behaves. And so I think I improved a lot when I started taking that time to before I do something, before I create the pose or the blocking or something, taking the time to observe my reference. And we're probably going to do it next time where we take what we created. We take our, our reference and we just compare what we did. What's the differences? What we like from one? What we like from the other? What's the next step? How can we create it? And just sometimes looking at a reference, looking at this skin fold and trying to understand how how it's made how i i would create that in zbrush what is this form what does it re represent what what do i get from it so spending that time observing i think is just as important as sculpting so if yes you need to spend a lot of time but you don't don't just spend your time sculpting. Also spend some time to observe what you're creating, what the world looks like, and 
how it influences each other. So that was it for for this week. Um, we're I'm gonna try to make one every two weeks and uh, that's it. I hope you have a good week and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.